possession, few who identify with Isnan, Iknan, all the other groups. So they consider like masjids. They have an imam, but he's part of a larger, uh, you know, organization. You know, and then they are affiliated to Ikna or Isna. So when he governs, he's not an Amir, yeah. nor he's the president of a university, I mean, of a, of a board of directors, nor is he a member of a founding group that is not affiliated to a state or national organization. Yeah. So these are the four categories that we have with regards to uh, uh, administrative organization. Now, let's um, let's hold the thought right there. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you one second. I think partly the dynamics of interaction, whether it is through mainstream media or mainstream academia, including both of you, or other uh, sources of community dialogue, intra-community dialogue, is the notion of the role of the Imam in the Masajid, whether it is foreign-born, foreign-educated or domestic-born, domestic-educated or domestic-born, foreign-educated, those are only variations. I think underlying mm -hmm. issue is the interpretation of the Qur'an, what interpretation of the Qur'an are made available. So to use contemporary term, it's the whole notion of politics of interpretation. How Qur'an has to be interpreted in America and understood by Muslims in today's situation. How do you see that politics of interpretation playing out? The politics of interpretation in the masjid and the demands and the exchange about that politics in the mainstream media and the mainstream academia. Um, that's a, a big and complicated question, I think. Um, I think the, um, I, I would, I would say, I'd be very curious to hear what uh, Professor Nyan, how, how he sees this, but I would say that this is a, a very, it's very contested terrain in all of those dimensions, mm -hmm. um, and that um, um, within a mosque, within within mosques in America, um, that. Um, Partly because um, uh, imams often uh, are hired by boards, as, as you su suggested, not always, but often, um, and the boards themselves are, are often not unified. I think this is where the corporate model, you, you the way you described it, I, I think would be a little misleading. Uh, corporate boards can also be divided, but I think. Uh, are much more governed by consensus uh, in the sense that that's how they typically operate. Um, my reading of, of mosque boards is that they're often very uh, contentious kinds of environments where the, um, whether it's questions of, of uh, interpreting uh, 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 the Quran or interpreting Islam more generally are heavily contested and, 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 and argued and fought out often masked by uh, political differences, ideological differences, or overlaid by them, as well as personality conflicts. So that um, um, I guess I would say that it's, 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 it's a multi-tiered kind of battle, multi-tiered contest, um, and if we're talking about the mosque, I think it's, a, it's an extremely contentious one. But, but yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious to hear your view. Yes, no, I, I think uh, if you look at this whole, the politics of the Masajid, mm -hmm. the politics of the Masajid is very complex because you have contenting levels of articulation. Mm -hmm. You see, you, 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 you have the attempt on the part of the leadership to create some kind of a replica of what they know at home. Mm -hmm. That's why the myth of the imported Imam becomes very crucial for some of them because the important Imam uh, is useful in terms of preserving the memories of the first generation. But they are antithetical to the assimilation, we talk about assimilation integration, yeah. to the to the Americanizing experiences of the younger generation. Let me, let me stop you there. Aren't we then giving the Imam too much power over the life of the individual? Well, <coughs> hang on, hang on a second. I think for the fact, uh, reason, that's my end. For every one individual who goes to mosque, there are at least four who don't. When we talk intergenerationally, then we are extending the presumed influence of the Imam way beyond what is empirically verifiable, number one. Number two, Imam is one source of influence, but not the only source of influence in the life of any individual. And number three, look at the models of assimilation people are doing. 
And I think one of the best ones was in New York Times, the woman who's doing her job and is a first rate high tech professional. All right. So people who are coming, arriving into the post-modern era with their identity intact, and people who are trying to check their hijab at the door or so, their identity at the door, there are two different models that are here. Mm. And they cannot be simply assigned to Imam. The, the post-9-11 gaze and pressure on American Muslims may account more for people clinging back to their faith than the role of any set of Imams put together. No, no, this is true. I, I think the, 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 the role of the Imam could be exaggerated. Uh, by the immigrant elements who want to maintain their memories through his presence. Hmm. However, the Imam himself is on the defensive because he's being challenged at various levels, uh, you know, like in terms of professional uh, uh, criterion and professional uh, 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 affirmativeness. You know, the Imam is challenged in, in terms of language competency. Yes, very much. See, so that becomes very yeah. critical in terms of the Imam. The Imam is also questioned in terms of familiarity with modern scientific knowledge mm -hmm. and relevance in terms of his khutbas to the daily needs of the members of the constituency. Mm. The Imam is also on a psychological defensive because he's supposed to be a role model but he cannot measure up fully as a role model if he doesn't have the wherewithal. And if his status is defined as in the case of the corporate model, mm. or if he, he finds himself as an Amir, but he doesn't have the wherewithal to really back his words with deeds. That happens to the charismatic leader. The recognition of charisma, a la Weber. You know, to what extent can you recognize charisma? to the point that you have institutional support on behalf of your leadership. So there are a number of things about the Imams. What about the intrusive forces operating in and around the mosque now? And by intrusive I don't mean only FBI, though I definitely mean FBI. I mean other kinds of groups, like the group recently said they will go and visit every mosque and see whether or not they talk about the Sharia law, and if they talk about the Sharia law they report them to such and such authorities. So now there is a number of mainstream media entities have gone into major mosques and they have attacked the Imam, they have attacked the khutbah, they have attacked the congregation, they have tried to intimidate the people. I'm not talking about the, you know, the, the sort of uh, tabloid press, I'm talking about mainstream major newspapers. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is this, I think the Imam, you know, the Imam faces a number of obstacles as a result of 9-11 and the emboldenment of some of the groups that have been system challenges to Muslims. And especially the Imam, because the Imam is identified as the fall guy for the community of Muslims, because those mm. who are desperately looking for targets within the community can find the Imam as the most visible target. So naturally the Imam is visible on a number of fronts. First of all, he is the only member of the community who has access to the bully pulpit, in this case the member he can come and he talks to the com com community in their life. So naturally, because he has access to this big magnifying mirror, uh, he becomes the fall guy, the one you can really tape, because he can speak loudly and you can get his voice without his knowledge, because yeah. he's speaking over a microphone. Second thing that makes the Imam vulnerable in the sense that the Imam is now being... Hang on, hang on. Is it only the Imam who is being made vulnerable or the person who is going there to pray? Anyway, yes, both of them. Yes.